All right, picture this. You are cruising through the SAT math module and then you get hit with a question that looks like this. And to do it by hand is messy and takes forever. This took me about three minutes, which is way more than what you should be spending on any given question. Desmos, on the other hand, can do it in about 20. Let's take a look. And there you go, in about 23 seconds, Desmos has popped out the right answer of 36. And we can actually check our work by drawing this line out with Desmos and seeing indeed 036 is the y-intercept. Welcome back to today's video, we're going to be learning about regressions. Now let me walk step by step through how I solve this question. Let's actually just go all the way to the beginning, let's cross everything out. So. If you know what a regression is, a basic definition is just going to be you want to try your best, if you have a set of points, to find a line that fits. That's pretty much the idea of it, and that's how Desmos works. So that's how Desmos is going to help us out here. Well, first, obviously, we need the table that we're going to make. So if you just type in table, it's going to pop one out for you. And then let's fill in our value. So we have negative 27x, and then it's going to be 3, and then negative 9, and 0, and then 21, and 5. And actually, this is more than enough points to plot out a parabola because every parabola is defined by three points. So from here, I'm actually just going to rename this G for simplicity's sake. But we want to have our value G regressed against what it's telling us, which is we have f of x on top over x plus 3. And what I'm actually going to do here is since x is found as a variable, in Desmos and it changes all the time. I'm going to change it to x1, which is what it automatically types in for the table. So x1. And then the question tells us that f of x is a linear function. So we know that that will follow the form ax plus b. And then the same issue here is we don't want to do a regression against a variable that's constantly changing right here. So we're just going to go with x1 like this. And actually immediately it just pops out everything we need. Right there is b36. So you'll realize that since f of x, I'll write it out for us, equals ax plus b. Well, we know that this a is just going to be 4, and then this b is going to be 36. And if we're looking for the x, uh, the y-intercept, well, this is already in that form. We know that b is the y-intercept whenever we're drawing a line like this. So there you have it, 0 to 36. So that's basically the strategy you want to use when you're looking at questions like these. Uh, to explain it a little further, what it's doing here is it has all the points of G and then we know we want it to be as similar to this as possible. So Desmos is going to do its best job to find values of A and B that make this table work with this equation here. And to do that by hand, like I said, takes absolutely forever, but Desmos is a computer and it can do it really quickly. So it's important to learn how to take advantage of these things so you save a bunch of time on the SAT. And now moving on to a different problem. I know this is really zoomed in, but another common problem you will see on the SAT is stuff like this, where you have this giant fraction polynomial. Um, and then it's asking you, what is the sum of a plus b plus c or a plus d or, or whatever like that. You're trying to find these coefficients, right? This is another type of question that you can just use a regression for. That's really easy. So after you type this in, it's about 10 seconds before you find the answer. So we're obviously just going to do a regression again. And then we're going to change all these x's to x1's so we can actually run the regression. And then from here, it pops out a bunch of answers. But I want to warn you guys that th this doesn't work, actually. This won't work because when you set x1 to a set of values, like I did in that table earlier, it actually changes. So if I said x was 1, it changes everything. Because it's trying to do its job to find the 
best solution. And then in this case, the easiest way for it to do that is since we have four unknowns, it just sets three of them to zero because that's really easy. Once you set them to zero, those terms go away. So you want to use the number of terms to find the number of numbers to use. So from here, we need like x1, but then you also need a few more. So let's do like 1.1 and let's do 1.2 and let's do 1.3 as well. And we'll actually see this doesn't work because we need to add a list. We're going to make this into a list. And from here, we'll actually see the right answer. This is where you can get all the right answers now. So if we just need a plus b plus c, we'll pop out 72. And then that's our answer. So another easy way to do this instead of writing out a list is just use the random function. It's going to make it a list of random numbers. So random and then parentheses. And since there's four, I'll put in four and boom, that works really well. It's just four decimals. And this will actually get the same answer because like I said, once again, there's going to be four random X one points in this imaginary table. That's not showing up right now that Desmos wants to make these two equal. So there's going to be like four points on this graph that we can't see, but Desmos in the back is trying to do all the work to make sure that these two are equal to each other or as close as possible. And if we have the four anchor points, essentially, you can think of it like that. It's going to find the right answer because once you have four points, you've defined the graph and there's only one graph. So I was going to show you if you go to three random numbers, it just obviously chooses to set one to zero because that, like I said, that's the easiest way to calculate things. But these numbers are completely random and these don't make sense anymore. And same thing if you put in a two or a one, it'll just make a certain number of them zero because that's this, just the easiest way to calculate that. So you need at least the number of variables that are missing. So five would work, 10 would work. They all give you 72 at the end of the day because once you have more than the number of variables, it's already locked in. So that's how you guys can use regressions to solve these types of questions. And I won't have like a full recording of this, but this whole uh, process takes about 25 seconds once you get really fast. Um, you just need to be able to honestly past that point. It's just recognizing that you can use a regression to solve this type of question and then making sure you don't make any typos. That's pretty much it because the work to do this takes about half a page and it's much easier to mess up that way. So I recommend that if you can identify the types of questions to use Desmos on, use Desmos because Desmos is very easy to double check. It's very quick and it'll save you a bunch of time. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys next time.